And my watch just gave the 420. Okay, we're live, folks. I don't expect anybody to be here for a little while, but we're going to get started here. Someone in the room. What's going on? How? I... Don't expect a lot of people to show up today, but yeah, never know. Uh, oh. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't do that. So how's this new camera look? I got to connect it up to this Chromebook to see if it would do better than the phone does. And I think it's a little better. It's a little better. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know. Hey, what's up, next girl? What's going on? Oh, let's see here. Uh, what I want to do here is if anybody wants to come up here, we'll do this real quick. Go back here. No, that's not what I wanted. I think it's control B. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so if anybody wants to jump up here, we can see if we can add somebody else. But um, this is a, just trying out a new camera I've been shooting with on some videos this week and trying it out as a, <clears throat> as a PC webcam to see if it uh, does better than the old phone did. Oh, so if anybody wants to you know, jump up and talk about weed. So, you know, I've been growing weed for about four years now, legally. And uh, for a long time, I was just worried about running out. You know, now I've got like tons of weed. So I'm going to cut back on my grows. Do like one plant in each of my three tents instead of like three or four like I'm doing now. And I have three autos going in the veg area and a couple of clones to feed the next next harvest. And I'm going to put seven plants that I got down there that I was going to grow in the tents. I'm going to put them outside and uh, grow them outside, just grow, grow them out out there. So that's going to take care of my outside grow. And uh, they're already about uh, 30 inches tall now, 36 inches tall now. So by the time I put them out, they'll be pretty good sized plants. So, I've just, I've been trimming all day. Um, I got more weed than I can really kind of process sometimes. So, anyway, I ate a couple of my chocolate squares before I came on. So, yeah, I'm a little fucked up. So, I'm going to be putting out um, a cherry pie a holy smoke, a banana fruit cake, a grape punch, um, a purple scout, no, punch bubble, grape punch, and um, a purple canyon. It's like seven plants I'm gonna put out there. I'm just gonna put them all outside in the garden and feed the hell out of them. I didn't feed them very good last year, so I'm gonna feed them heavier this year and just see what we get out of them outside. Problem is my garden's in kind of a shaded area. It doesn't get all full sunlight all day like I really wish it did. But, you know, it, uh, 
it did, it does okay because it's going to have like four months of veg time, so you know it's going to have plenty of time to to get big. Ah. So, yeah, I'm going to cut down to like one plant for each one of the tents. And I'm going to probably, you know, I've been growing this, this green point seeds for a while now. I've been growing these things out and I've got some new strains of theirs coming through the tents now that I haven't grown yet. But, the, you know, they're flowering now. And the only one that's not in flower that I haven't flowered out yet of their strains is the purple bubble kush. And it's just a weird looking ass plant. I mean, it's the center stalk is shorter than the satellite branches. It looks like a weird candelabra. Um, I've never seen a plant do that before. I didn't top it. I didn't, I didn't accidentally break off the top or anything. It's just the way it grew. So that's going to go in the tent and I'm keeping two cherry pies, the purple bubba kush and the alien punch to grow indoors. And then when those are grown out, I'm not really going to take a break, but I may, you know, grow some autos or, you know, do something different just to, you know, give myself a little bit of a break. I've been growing straight for four years. I can't take a vacation. I can't go anywhere hardly. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the problem of running out of weed is no longer an issue. I've got buckets of weed down here. So, so I'm going to try to back up a little bit and do some, I guess, specialized grows, do a lot of hyper training on them, you know, and try to get like super big buds all the way through the plant and try to really get big yields, maybe grow some, uh, um, maybe I'll grow some, uh, big bud strains, you know, like, uh, Bruce Banner, you know, something like that, you know, just to see if I can get some really big stuff, you know. Um, that apple fritter got some huge nugs on that thing, and I didn't have to do any pruning or training on that thing. The plant grew out absolutely perfect. All the branches were just perfect. Hey, indoor, outdoor, 420 grow and smoke. What's up? So, yeah, that apple fritter auto, oh, I, I popped six seeds, only got one to freaking grow, but it uh i top i harvested the tops off that thing and just the top third of that plant was three ounces and an auto you know and i still had two thirds of it i just chopped and hung up downstairs so i think that's going to be another four or five ounces probably even the bottom buds on that thing were big they were all like the size of golf balls you know are bigger so yeah, that was a great strain. It just I had a hell of a time getting it to germinate. I tried, you know, some of them I soaked, you know, some of them I did the paper towel, some of them I went straight in the dirt, you know. Um, I got some to actually pop the surface and then they just fell over and died. They were all crappy looking. Hey, Mo Manning Meds, what's up? What's going on, everybody? Uh, greenhouse seeds, Velvet Moon. Now, that's one of their strains I haven't grown yet. And I, I, I've only grown about maybe a dozen of their strains, but I feel like I've been kind of like, like hanging in Greenpoint Seeds room for a long time now, and I've grown a lot of their strains because I like purple. So I like the purple punches that they cross everything with and, uh, you know, most of their stuff with. And uh, so I've got a lot of purple this and purple that, and purple, 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 and uh, grape, grape, and grape, and purple, and, and you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I may, uh, you know, back up a little bit. You know, I'm growing some Northern Lights right now in auto, and I tell you what, that's, it's been a while since I've grown Northern Lights. And, you know, I could use a good, strong indica, you know, life's pretty stressful. We could all use a good, strong indica and knock us on our ass when we need it. So I got two of those started as autos. And I got this auto from Dr. Judd over at GreenCertMeds.com. Um, he was on a live with me last time, and uh, he's the guy I get my medical card from and stuff. Anyway, he's selling seeds now. He went over to Amsterdam, and I think he messed around with Royal uh, Queen Seeds. 
I think I got that right. Uh, he got some kind of relationship with them. And um, so I bought uh, the Northern Lights and these, these seeds from him. It's one of his strains called Tatooine Sunset. And it's um, supposed to be an indica hybrid with 26% uh, THC. So uh, three seeds of it and uh, got one to sprout. Eh. On the Northern Lights, I got two of the three to sprout. So, you know, that's the problem with autos. But interestingly enough, when I lollipop the Northern Lights, I had some really nice cuts. And I thought, you know what? It's early in the veg cycle still. The plant's not that big yet. I'm going to try to clone it. So I cut three cuts off the bottom, and I've got them in my clone machines. And they're standing straight up, and they're looking pretty dang good still. So if I get them to root pretty quickly, Blue Dream just committed suicide right in front of me yesterday. Oh, no, no. I got a Purple Dream growing, so that's going to be close to what you had there. Um, oh, that's a shame. Blue Dream Autumn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, autos can be a little, you know, people say autos are easy to grow. Everybody should grow autos are easy, easy. Yeah, they are to a point, but, yeah, they can be a pain in the ass sometimes too, you know. So, you know, I, it's hard to get, sometimes get consistent results. You'll grow five seeds and one of them will be a real small plant and the other two will be a little bit bigger. So, you know. So I got this tattooed sunset growing and the two Northern Lights autos growing over there. So I actually have three autos growing at the same time over there in the 25 gallon uh, or 20 gallon. I need a 20 or 25 gallon pots I got over there. And so I'm going to cut way back on my veg area. I'm not going to need this many plants if I'm only going to be putting three into the tents at a time, one per tent. So I can cut way back on all that. It's going to save a lot of work. And, um, you know. Autos are finicky sometimes. Some explode, some do nothing. Yeah, that apple fritter auto, again, I had six seeds. Five of them, could not. I could not get them out of the dirt. But the sixth one, it really grew nice. I mean, if you look back at my videos, you'll see the damn thing. It was a tree. It was a nice little small tree out in my veg area there. And uh, like I said, I chopped the top third of it, you know, earlier and got three ounces out of that and i just chopped the bottom two thirds the other day and it's all hanging up so i'm probably going to get like six or seven ounces out of that little auto i mean it wasn't that little it was like five feet tall you know five five and a half feet tall it was a pretty good sized plant so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck around with the autos a little bit more you know i you know um uh the tattoo and sunset is a hybrid. Yeah, it's I don't even know what the lineage is on it. It's you know, I get seeds all the time from people. Here, try this, grow this, you know. I I bred it myself, you know. And you know, the, the bad thing about it is a lot of times most people don't give you a lot of history about it, you know. But you know, I guess if I hit them up, he'd give me all the lineage on it. So anyway, I'm just growing it out because yeah, I needed an auto seed and it was there. So <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm going to work on my autos a little bit and I'm going to cut down way down on my flower plants in the, in the flower tents because I don't need this massive amount. Plus the, the few times I did grow a single plant in the four by four and four by five tents, I got huge yields. Like I grew two purple banana cookies back to back in tent number two by themselves. And I got over a pound, pound and a half on each one of those by themselves, one plant. So you know, there's a lot to be said about not crowding them too much. You know, you get three plants crowded together, you still get your pound, pound and a half, but it's not as good looking bud. You know, you get a little bit more bottom bud that you don't like. So, you know, I can I can take the luxury of just like kicking back a little bit and slowing down. I've got a factory going, basically. I'm producing marijuana like a freaking assembly line down there. And like I said, I have cat litter buckets full of bud. You know, like six months ago, I had a little shortage. I actually ran short on, on weed because I was growing hydroponically and I wasn't doing too great at it. And uh, I backed up again and said, you know, let's go back to dirt. You know, let's do it the way we did before it worked. So that's what happened. And now I've got more weed that I can possibly, you know, handle. So that's kind of a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. But... Um, 
so yeah, Greenpoint Seeds, I've been doing a lot of their grows, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's time to uh, move it. Now, the thing is, I don't like the diesel and the gassy strains as much. I like the fruitier strains better and the pastry strains better, you know, the, uh, the cookies and all that stuff better. Oh, here's my cat. How you doing, Bailey? Um, you're on two five by fives for flower. I got I got one four by four and two four by fives. Uh, my tents and uh, and those are just for flour, yeah. And so, but I got 100 gallon fabric pots in them that I've got rolled down, so they're basically holding about 60 or 70 gallons of dirt, roughly. And uh, I've been growing three plants per tent in that big pot, but they get really, really crowded in there. It gets really hard to do the foliation and you know. Uh, stuff like that when they're just like crowded in there like that so i'm gonna go back to doing one plant per tent when i did the pbc that way i got huge bud and and they all came out beautiful and the plant was really big i had a comment the other day you know dude uh if you did some pruning and and you know training and lollipopping better you get more big bud well you know i took their point to a point Hey, Jesse James, what's going on? But some of the strains I'm growing right now, like Texas Toasted and Punch Bubble, which I think both have bubble gum in them. I could be wrong on that other one, but I think they both got bubble gum. The buds are not going to get big. I don't give a damn how good a grower you are or what you do to train them. They're not going to get that big. So, you know, some strains don't get big buds. That's the way they are. But the weed can be really, really killer. I mean, size of bud does not necessarily equate strength of the bud. So, you know, I mean, I make edibles and extracts and hash from my bottom third buds. And the shit's so strong, people can't handle it. I mean, I get people telling me, I can't eat your chocolate. It's like knocking me on my ass. So... You know, the bud strength is not determined necessarily by the size of the bud. We all like to have those beautiful, you know, quarter size buds or bigger to put in our bags and show off. But, you know, we grind it all up in the end anyway, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, the link's up if you guys want to go up. Let me put that up again. Um, in case anybody wants to jump up here. seven by 12 flower room yeah though, that would be nice to have that big of a flower room but again you know i i don't really need to produce the volume of weed that a seven by 12 flower room would probably give give me um you know i'm getting like i said i'm getting backed up right now with, with i've got a few clients a few patients that i that i take care of on a caretaker basis in missouri legally but they don't consume like I do. So, you know, they can't possibly consume, you know, the quantities that I'm able to produce these days. And, um, you know, just trimming alone gets better. It seems like I'm almost perpetually been trimming. It's like, it's like, I never, I get like a week where I'm not trimming. And then the next, the next crop is ready to be trimmed, you know? So yeah, it's been a little bit strenuous, you know, I mean, it's a lot of watering, a lot of feeding. You guys know you're all growers. I do like to have room to walk the whole way around, but I've burned through about three pounds every couple of months. Whoa. Well, you know what? I have no idea what my consumption is, but uh, you probably got me there. I got buckets and boxes of weed laying around now. Yeah, see, that's that's what I'm talking about. I got like these cat litter buckets uh, that I had laying around that I cleaned out and I've literally got three or four of them already full of weed. So, you know, and that's not counting the big jars. I got some big uh, apothecary jars full. and Yeah, so there's a lot of weed down there. So it's kind of cool. It's just kind of cool. So, um, so yeah, I don't have to worry about quantity. I think I, think I go through about, uh, I want to say I go through about an ounce to two ounces a week. So, if I do two ounces a week, which, you know, that's probably good. That's probably possible. I smoke a lot of weed. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, a half a pound a month. So in three months, you're going to go through three pounds. I'm going to go through about a pound and a half. 
So yeah, I do got to keep growing. You know, there's no, there's no uh, idea that I can like stop for a while because uh, you know I could burn through it if I <laughs> if I put my mind to it. Speaking of which, uh, I need to fucking do a hit. It's been a while. This little Texas toasted here. Now again, this had the weirdest looking buds. They look like miniature pine cones, real nuggy looking, knobby looking things. And they weren't very big. I don't care. I grew the plant like four or five different times. And, you know, yeah, you know, maybe I'm not the best grower in the world. But if it was, it had the potential to be big bud, one of them would have had it, you know. It's just not a big bud plant. But you know what? You grind it up anyway. So it don't matter. I mean, this is what it looks like when it's, you know, when it's ground up. You know, well, you can't really see inside there. But it's, it's you know, so, yeah. It's just a small bud plant. And that alien punch, I think, is going to be a small bud plant, too. So, you know, and what's really nice is being able to help out my friends if they need it, you know. And, you know, if, uh, you know, I, I really have been getting a lot into the medical stuff. I do a lot of edibles and extracts for people that are in a lot of pain. You know, I get a lot of older folks out there that are just like in a lot of pain, and a lot of them don't like to smoke. So, you know, I make the chocolate squares or gummies, or uh, I give them the oil in a tincture bottle and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Or I'll give them a stick of butter, you know, that they can make their own goods with, you know, and I'll put it on baked potato or something, you know. So I really have been, I'd say the last year or so, I've done more concentration on on edibles and extracts and hash and stuff like that than i have on so much just trying to grow the next great strain or whatever um you know of course you got to have weed for all that and i've had no problem getting weed to grow so that's that problem you know it took me a while but i'm finally in the groove now where you know i can, we can repeat this process pretty much ad nauseum i can keep because i do a no-till gardening so my soil is great and you know as long as i don't fuck it up um anything i stick in that in those tents just explodes you know i get like 18 20 inches of stretch in flower on a lot of these strains because the soil is so rich so so i've got it down pretty much to a i mean i'm not gonna brag and say i'm a perfect grower that's for damn sure i'm, I'm not even close to a master grower but i can consistently grow marijuana that's really strong i mean the stuff is just covered in crystals and stickier than shit you know trimming the stuff and i gotta clean the clippers after doing one branch you know it's like they just sticking together so as long as i'm getting that i mean my trim that i'm using for larve and for like pre-rolls and stuff i would have paid big bucks for that when i was buying because it's just basically all small bud you know that i don't want to you know, put into a bag for somebody else so but yeah i've been doing a lot more with the edibles and extracts and um, stuff like that you know and i'm going to start experimenting a little bit with psilocybin a little bit eh, here and there just to uh, see what that can do for my patients as well you know some of them have some you know anxiety issues things like that and, and cannabis can help a lot of those patients a lot but some of them just are so far gone they need something to kind of reboot their their psyche a little bit you know and i think sometimes shrooms can do that does anybody want to jump up here and talk about weed um so what's the What's the hot strain to everybody? Like when I grew that apple fritter, everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's a really hot strain. I, I didn't know it was a really hot strain. I just grew it. So what's the really hot strains out there right now that people are like, you know, screaming for? Anybody want to throw out some strains that they're getting a lot of requests for or they're getting a lot of uh, interest in? Because, you know, I'm probably going to look to, to change things up a little bit here, you know. And they can be autos or photos. You know, um, so Jesse, what are you growing? It's really exciting now. Anything cool indoor, outdoor? What are you guys growing? That's 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 turning you on right now. I mean, you know, I'm always looking for people. So, oh, you got you got to try. Like Holy Smoke is one of the first strains I ever grew from Greenpoint Seeds. Somebody told me online, you got to try this shit. It's really killer. 
so I grew it, you know, and it really turned out to be a great strain. I've been growing it for like two and a half years now. Gray, is that a strain? I don't know what gray is. That's a new one on me. Okay. Um, how long you have to elaborate a little bit here? Is that a hybrid? Is it an indica, sativa? Is it a no? Okay. Um, so anybody growing anything they like, or anybody want to grow something that they're not growing that they're interested in growing? Because I'm going to say Blue Jack, Jack Herrera. Okay. Jack Herrera, I grew that in one of my first grows. I had some Jack Herrera growing. It's been a long time. Blue Jack. So that's probably Blue Dream and Jack Herrera, I guess. Old Possum, is that what the Blue Jack would be? Uh, Blue Dream and Jack Herrera. Okay, your Blue Dream is your, uh, is a sativa, as I recall. Max cross with Jack, I heard. Okay. Max Jack, huh? So Jack Herrera's, you know, I heard a, a, a story the other day that his son is starting a cannabis museum. I think it's in Los Angeles somewhere in tribute to his father, Jack Herrera. So if you're out in L.A., you might want to check that out. It might be pretty interesting. It talks about the use of cannabis throughout history and the law enforcement bullshit and all that stuff. So, yeah. Cheers. So do you ever guy you guys ever play like the, the hit game where like you watch somebody on TV, like say a spokesman that says something all the time over and over again. And every time they say the phrase, you gotta do a bong hit. Well, I don't know if anybody know who this is, but Elon Levy, the guy that was the Israeli spokesman, he just got suspended because he's a lying sack of shit. Um he would always say October 17th, like 50 times during a 12-minute conference. Uh, press conference. So I started doing a bong at every time he would say October 17th. October 7th, I mean, for the massacre date. Every time he said October 7th, I had to do a bong hit. I swear to God, the last time he was on, I almost passed out. I must have had to do it. I literally had some stacking up. I had to catch up. So it's a fun game. Pick somebody that says a certain phrase over and over again a lot, like, Remember Carl Sagan used to say billions and billions and billions. Well, we used to play a game and when I was in college. Every time he would say the word billions, we had to do a bong head. So we would get really fucked up because he would always say it three times at least every time he'd say billions and billions and billions. So we would just have to, oh, that's three hits for me. <laughs> you know, there you go. So that's the kind of fun the bong game we used to like to play, you know. Um, you know, some kind of game that makes you smoke a shitload of weed. Because back then, the weed sucked. Okay, I'm talking like 1980. Uh, I was in college. The weed sucked. It, it just, okay, it got you high. You know, it, uh, but compared to the shit I'm growing now and the stuff that you can buy now, it, it wasn't even in the same neighborhood, okay? It was like probably 6%, 7% THC maybe, unless you could really pony up and get the Sensamia that was like $500 a half ounce or some shit crazy like that. Yeah, 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 funny, ha, ha, ha. Um, but the weed just wasn't near as good as, you know, the kind of stuff that's available everywhere now i mean even the most mediocre grower out there now is growing better weed than what we were probably getting in the midwest in the 1980s okay it's just now if you were rich and you knew the right people who were coming back from the west coast a lot you could get the, the seedless higher quality stuff but it was extremely expensive i mean eight hundred to a thousand dollars an ounce at times they were charging for it you know People would buy like three grams of it, you know. So, so yeah, but weed now is is way better. Uh, we didn't have all the extracts and edibles. We made brownies and they sucked because the weed sucked, and we didn't know how to make brownies right, so they sucked anyway. Um, we had hash, but we bought that, and it came from like. I don't know, Morocco, Algeria. It was always black Moroccan hash, you know, like black tar hash. Um, we didn't have um, 
vapes, obviously. We didn't have um, any of that stuff. We didn't have wax. You know, there was nobody dabbing. 1980, nobody was dabbing that I knew about. Nobody around here knew what that was. So, yeah, a lot of things have changed a lot since then, but I think the medical part of it's what's really got me excited. Like I said, I got people in their 80s that tell me that they do a little bit of my oil or they do a gummy before they go to bed at night and they're out of pain and they sleep great. Now, that's worth a lot of money to someone who's in pain and can't sleep. So, you know, I, I dig that part, you know, and I use, I use my edibles and extracts myself. I, you know, I have pain and problems too. So, so, um, oh man, um, trying to think if there's anything else going on in the Midwest that's really exciting right now. I mean, um, you know, the dispensaries are still overpriced, which is fine. I don't care. I don't buy weed there anyway. Um, uh, let's see if there's anything really exciting going on, though. I, I We're still waiting to see the first consumption uh, lounge open up anywhere in the Midwest. I just read about one opening up in Las Vegas in, in, on the Strip, um, a cannabis consumption lounge. And, God, it was unbelievable. You had to buy the wheat there. You had to consume it there. You couldn't take it with you. You couldn't take it out of the place. And they were charging like $80 for three grams because you couldn't bring your own in. And they sold some edibles, I think, too, that were really super high. Oh, and I think they offered uh, uh, dabs. And they were like $10 or $20 a hit doing dabs. So, yeah, if, if you average all that, how much is your intake, including edibles? <laughs> well, let's see. I usually do at least uh, a couple of chocolate squares a day, um, you know, um, and then, okay. The way, best way I know to do this is I've got a, a carrier that holds nine bowls. And I, and I know how many times I, I, I do the bowl once and then I put it back in there to be clean. So... I can generally do at least 12 to 15 bowls a day. So, you know, I think each bowl holds probably, you know, a gram and a half, you know, maybe two grams. Now, you know, I don't always smoke down the bottom of the bowl because it gets harsh. So I waste a lot of weed because I don't care really. So I don't know. But if you figure that I'm doing it, it, just say 12 bowls a day at two grams a bowl, that's that's almost an ounce a day. <laughs> it's a little bit more than I thought. Oh, son. That's a lot of weed. Okay, so like a gram. Okay, so testing is 30 days before you cut, resulting in legal... Uh, we THC is only T, which THCA breaks down due to time, UV, or heat. Good, Colton Franklin. Okay. That's a lot to consider there, Opossum. If you consider starting a shot for THCA, testing is 30 days before you cut. Resulting in legal foamy THC is only THC when THC breaks down due to time, UV, or heat. Okay, that's interesting. So, if I'm doing uh, 12 grams a day, that's, uh, let's just say we're doing 14 grams a day to make it easy. So, we're doing an ounce every two days. So, that's two, uh, three, that's, that's, that's three and a half ounces a week. So let's just say four ounces a week to make it easy because my math sucks when I'm stoned. Um, that means I'm doing a pound a month. So, yeah, I guess, okay, I was making fun of you with the three pounds in three months. But, yeah, it looks like I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh, shit. See, I never wanted to really, like, figure that out because, like, when I was buying this stuff, I used to really struggle to, like, keep down to, like, an ounce a month. Or an ounce and a half a month because it was like 300 bucks an ounce and I was broke. 
So I was just always fucking trying to ration it out, you know, and do one hitters and shit like that. And now that I got all the weed I want, it's like I just smoke like a chimney. <laughs> I mean, I literally take a bomb to bed. And if I wake up in the middle of the night, I will reach over and do a bomb. So, you know, I get plenty of chances to smoke during the day. I mean, I'm retired, so I got all day. <laughs> Don't have to go to work. So, I'm trying to step up the quality on my videos a little bit. I've been shooting them with a phone and just like, you know, editing them on a phone and then just like shipping them up to YouTube. And, you know, the quality just wasn't that great. You just can't control the camera that well and everything. So I bought a camera, and it sucked. So I bought another camera, and it wasn't quite good enough, so I sent it back. And I bought this one camera I'm using now. Now, this is the camera I'm using for my webcam now. It's got a little mic on top and everything. So this is the camera I'm using for my video, the last video that I did. And um, um, I, I'm doing the editing on a Chromebook that I just got a couple months ago, and uh, it's a lot easier than trying to edit a video on a phone. You know, you got a mouse and shit, it kind of makes it all easier. So I'm trying to step up my video a little bit. I'm not putting in special effects or music or any of that kind of shit yet, but um, hey, poor guard, what's going on, man? It's good to see you. You got eight people in here. I can't believe it, man. I didn't know if they might show up or not. I like to do a live every now and then just to, you know, it's weird. I did a two hour live about a month ago with Dr. Judd and that. And ever since then, my videos went way up in views and then they started going back down again. So there's something about doing a live, you know, and maybe so much time involved that, that puts you higher on the algorithm or something. I don't know. So anyway, I'm trying to step up my game a little bit on my video quality. And this camera is the, the first step in that to try to get a little bit better quality, a little bit brighter image. Um, it's, uh, it even has infrared, so I can even shoot pictures of the tent with the lights out, which would be kind of bizarre. It's like black and white. Yeah, good to see you, poor garden, as always, man. You know, we're just getting high, man, you know. We're talking about weed, um, because it's a big part of my life. I've been smoking marijuana for 42 years. Uh, bro, I'm kind of, yeah. So, you know, it's older than, longer than most of you have been alive. And it's been an important part of my life. Now, you know, it did things that kept me from getting jobs that I wanted because I couldn't pass the test. So it changed my life in a lot of ways because I ended up being self-employed most of my life because I couldn't fuck with the damn piss test all the time. So it changed my life in a lot of different ways, you know. Um, but I think that without marijuana, I would have been an alcoholic like all the other men in my family have been for generations and generations. So thank God I found marijuana at 18 instead of like discovering that Jack Daniels was my favorite friend. And uh, I very seldom drink. I don't drink very often at all. And if I do, it's like one drink. And I just don't like alcohol that much. It doesn't do that much to me. 40 plus years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, it sucks to be old, man. You know, I, it really sucks to realize that you're not 18. You, you you like to think of yourself that you're 18, that you're still 18, that you still got that, everything going on. And then you look in the fucking mirror and you're like, nah, no, not quite so much. So, yeah, it's, um, you yeah, know, I'm old. But you know what? Uh, the alternative to being old is dying young. So I'll go with being old. It's all right. I can live with it. Um all my family's dead. They all died young. So, you know, hey, I'm still hanging in there. I'm going to tell you why I think I'm still okay. Okay, one thing, two things, three things, actually. I think marijuana is very good for your immune system. I think it helps balance your immune system and your hormone levels with the way it works in your body. Okay, I believe that to this day. There's even been evidence that smoking it when people had COVID actually killed the COVID. So it, it's good for you. There's no cancer from smoking pot. You're not going to get cancer from smoking pot. It ain't going to happen. Now, I just went through a shitload of medical tests. I mean, they did the pulmonary tests, they which for the lung volume and all that shit. They had me on a heart monitor for three or four days. 
because I got to have some surgery. And they want to make sure I'm going to be able to get through the surgery. All right. All right. And I'm going to tell you right now. All my numbers came out perfect. All my blood levels are fine. They're perfect. My heart's in great shape. There's no blockages. Uh, my lungs had 110 to 120 percent volume. And it was so funny. She goes, how do you get such deep volume in your lungs? I said, honey, I've been smoking bongs for 40 years. And she just started to laugh. And <laughs> I said, look, you do a lot of deep bong hits and you train your lungs to expand. <laughs> so my lungs are in great shape. My heart's in great shape. Um, you know, I don't have diabetes. I don't have any of this other bullshit everybody else seems to have because I don't drink and I don't smoke cigarettes. You know, yeah, and, you know, am I smoking a pound a month? Is that abuse? I don't know. Yeah, it probably is. Um, but you know what? I made it this far. You know, I, and I'm still in good health. I mean, physically, I'm in pretty good shape. I mean, there's things I'd like to be better. And I certainly could be stronger. And I certainly could work out and get my shit together that way in a lot of ways. But all the medical tests are coming back really, really good. And I think it's because of cannabis. I really think the phytocannabinoids in there are just able to regulate all the systems of your body and keep them in balance. That's what I believe anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know, I always have to put myself as over 18 and not made for kids because if I don't, they do it instantly. As soon as I show a pot plant or I smoke a head, you know, boom, you know, like if a kid sees somebody getting high, which is unbelievable because their kid, their parents are probably getting high in front of them. They're going to freak out and start getting high or something. I don't know. So cigarette free 10 years next month. Dude, that's the best thing could have done for yourself i'm telling you right now my parents died from smoking my, my grandparents died from smoking you know it just goes back generations they all smoke like furnaces cigarettes are the most evil thing you can put in your body the, the the chemicals in there are just designed to make you addicted to them and they cause a lot of serious i'll give you an example my great grandfather was a tobacco farmer in Kentucky. And he grew and smoked his own tobacco. Hey, Vizoli, what's going on? Smoked his own tobacco in a corn cob pipe every day and lived to be 106 years old. Now, why do I think that is? Well, he wasn't putting preservatives in his tobacco. He wasn't putting cyanide and arsenic and chocolate and and all this other crap in there to make it more addictive. So he was just smoking pure tobacco. I think it's what we've done to tobacco that makes it as dangerous as it is. Not that it probably isn't bad anyway. But he lived to be over 100, smoked his own tobacco in a corn cob pipe. And another thing, you know, these fiberglass filters and cigarettes, those things are not cool, man. Seriously. My old man died of asbestosis, okay? All that is is basically some fiberglass getting inside your lungs. Okay, you know, asbestos getting inside your lungs and, and lodging on the inside line of your lungs. Do you not think smoking heat through a fiberglass filter that's made as cheap as they can make it isn't going to break away some microscopic fiberglass particles every time you suck in? So think about that. Every time they smoked them cigarettes, they were sucking in fiberglass or whatever the hell they're putting in those filters back then. So my old man, my great grandfather, he smoked pure tobacco through a corn cob pipe that he made himself with no filters and no preservatives and it didn't kill him so it's all anecdotal i know but it's you know so yeah i'm just uh daily med toker quit alcohol 2.5 years dude that's another one i gotta tell you something i walked into to a, a new doctor and he looked at me he goes he goes, I can tell you two things about yourself right now. And I said, what's that? He goes, you don't drink and you don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> and I said, right. And he said, I can tell just by looking at a patient that they drink too much or they smoke. Alcohol is poison. There is really no safe amount of alcohol. I mean, your body learns to 
tolerate it and filter it out and but it doesn't like it it's poison to your body it's not designed to absorb alcohol so yeah um you know it's even if you're just like a you know two beer day drinker it's still not necessarily good for you you know it's just too much i tell my dad it's a, it's a drug Yeah, yeah, ten dollars a pack here. Now. Oh yeah, man, cigarettes are not fucking cheap. You know, of course, people always go, yeah, but look at how much pot costs. Well, <laughs> it cost me nothing. So, <laughs> so you know, but yeah, I, I think, for example, the, the Native Americans they sell cigarettes on the on the reservation that are made the old way. They're made with just pure tobacco. You know. You know, none of the preservatives and shit. And, uh, you know, who knows that those might not be a little bit better than the ones you're getting from, you know, from Raleigh, North Carolina. But, uh, yeah, cigarettes and alcohol, man. I mean, you might as well just, look, if you want to drink and you want to smoke cigarettes, just figure you're going to give up 10 years of your life. You know, and... The 10 years before that are not going to be great. So if the average life expectancy is 76, you're going to make it to maybe 66. My, my dad made it to 66. My mom made it to 54. Okay. Um, and the last years they had sucked. So even the quality was bad those years before they died. You know, they had cancer and the whole bullshit, heart attacks and everything. Yeah. And, 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 Vape, vaping nicotine may be safer than smoking cigarettes because they don't put the chemicals in the nicotine that they do, that they add to cigarette tobacco itself in the raw form. But I, the, the, the evidence is still out on that. The, the jury's still out on that. We don't know what the long-term effects of smoking nicotine through a vape are going to be. I mean, we had that whole vitamin E problem where people were, like, freaking dying or whatever from vitamin E they were putting in vapes. So, you know... we. They're just kind of using people as guinea pigs. They really don't know. Yeah, I mean, smoking weed, look, I don't believe that smoking weed is bad for you. I just don't think it's going to hurt you. I, you know, I just, they, they have tried for decades, ever since I was a kid, to prove that marijuana causes lung cancer. They can't. They cannot find a causal relationship. They just never have been able to, not even statistically. Now, one of the problems they had when they were doing the studies back then is a lot of people that smoked weed back then also smoked cigarettes. It was a weird causal relationship that I could never quite figure out. Uh, if you could smoke weed, why would you smoke a cigarette if you had the choice? If, if Why would you, you know, one gets you fucked up, the other one just makes you cough and tastes like shit. So, um, I, I do believe that cannabis supercharges your immune system. I believe that. There was evidence that people that smoked marijuana were less likely to get COVID. And there was evidence that if they did get COVID, they were less likely to have serious problems with it. And I believe that's because the smoke they were doing was coating the inside of their lung and killing the virus. I believe that cannabis is an antiviral. It's an anti-inflammatory and it's an antibacterial. Okay. It's also an anti-anxiety and an antidepressant, depending on what strains you use. So it has a lot of different characteristics, depending on how you prepare it, uh, how you concentrate it, and how you ingest it. You can get a lot of different effects from the same plant. And uh, yeah, exactly. So um, I, I honestly think that with tobacco on the market today, that you know, there's a they've already proven there's like a thousand things they add to tobacco. I don't know why, just to make it more addictive and make it, you know, smoother burning or whatever. And uh, they're all carcinogens. You know, it's all bad shit. So you, you can kid yourself all you want. You know, my mom used to smoke the damn Paul Malls unfiltered. You know, that's you might as well, you know, just. Now, it's probably healthier for her that they didn't have a filter on, but then at the end, she was smoking filters too, you know. Exactly. You know, I honestly think that, it, look, I, I just told you my lung capacity was like 110, 120 uh, percent. And uh, my oxygen levels during wake are always at 97, 98, 99 percent. 
So there's no COPD going there. So, you know, there's different ways that you can take your cannabis, you know, whether it be dabbing it to get a real concentrated effect or hash or, you know, edibles or extract oils or, uh, you know, dude, I made a pork chop dinner the other night that was fried in cannabis oil, okay? And then I took the drippings and I made milk gravy out of it, okay? And I got to tell you something. I'm a pretty heavy fucking consumer, okay? So shit don't usually fuck me up too bad. I ate half a pork chop and I, I guess about maybe uh, four or five spoons of that mashed potatoes and gravy. And I was fucked up. I mean, I was fucked up. It soaked into the meat. It soaked into the breading. It's, it was in the gravy. And I was like, I, I only probably had like a maybe a, a an eighth of a cup of oil in the whole recipe. And I swear to God, it was like, it was, it was lethal. It was absolutely lethal. And it's amazing the things you can do cooking with cannabis or cooking with cannabis butters and oils. It's amazing the things you can make that will really affect you because edibles, you know, affect you in a different way. There it's more of a body high. It takes longer to hit, but it lasts longer. Uh, it, it can help people with pain more sometimes than smoking can, depending on the type of pain they have and you know what they're trying to get to. So, yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with the oils once you make them. And that pork chop dinner was lethal. I mean, if you were a lightweight beginner and you would have had some of my mashed potatoes and gravy, you probably would have been spending the night. You know, you wouldn't have been able to drive for a while. So... Yeah, I'm more into cooking fresh like sea bass fish, mutton curry stuff, but weed leftovers, keep leaf leaf stuff. So you can really do a lot, like you're saying. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I use the bottom trim off my plants. And I mean, the stuff looks beautiful. It's it's mostly bud and it's sugar leaves. It's sugar leaves that are covered in trichomes. And uh, that stuff makes my edibles and my oils. And I'm telling you, the shit is getting stronger and stronger. It's getting to where people are like, dude, I can't eat a whole square. I can't eat a whole gummy. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know? So, yeah, you can do a lot with it. You know, you can do a lot with it. And you can help people, you know. Um, man, you know, I don't know about you, but I've, I've had a bad back for like 30 years. So there's times in my life where the pain can be so freaking bad. You're like, can I just swallow a gun and call it a fucking day? Because I can't take this pain no more. If it wasn't for my edibles and extracts and cannabis and stuff like that, I, I don't know how much I can function some days. And, you know, of course, doctors won't give you any kind of opioids or anything anymore. God, you have to be president of the United States to get them or something now. So, you know, if I was to rely on that for pain management, I'd be screwed. I don't know how many of you guys know Harley Grower, but he's had serious back surgery and was, wasn't even able to walk. He didn't even smoke weed or nothing before that. And, his cousin or brother, somebody, his brother, came up to the hospital and just started putting RSO in his mouth and shit. And he ended up walking out of the hospital the next day. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, he can tell you about some of the different things he's experimented with, like, you know, shrooms and chocolate bars uh, with THC. So he sent me some of his shroom chocolate bars the other day and I took some of them and I actually melted them down and added my THC chocolate to them because they were kind of gritty, you know, a little hard to get down. Yeah. So Harley dude is a great guy, man. I got some great strains from him. I grew out and just, he's, he's, he's just super dude. He's, he's a one in my book. Um, but he sent me these chocolate bars and they were kind of sandy because he had a lot of mushroom ground up in him, you know. So I took him and I added about the same amount of my chocolate THC to it and melted it down and reported it in my molds. And I did one of the squares the other day, and it was good. It was just the right dose for me. I didn't want to get like a psychedelic fucking freak out experience. I just wanted to get kind of a reboot and feel better. And I swear to God, I felt so good. I went downstairs and played drums. And I haven't played my drums for probably a year. I went down and just played drums for like a half an hour, you know, and it felt really good. So, yeah, there are some real advantages to that. So, um, yeah, I mean, slow burner, I mean, yeah, it, 
you know, I'm experimenting a little bit now with shrooms. I've got some friends in town that are growing them. I tried to grow shrooms, and if you look back on my videos way back, you might see some of the <laughs> disasters I grew. I actually grew like two or three tiny little shrooms. They were about this big. <laughs> it was really, it was really wrong. Yeah, he he's he's really the king of shrooms. He's one of the guys I know that really knows his shit when it comes to shrooms. And he's really experimented with a lot of different strains because he's dealing with massive massive pain levels that you and I can't even fucking imagine. I mean, they had him on massive painkillers and he was screaming in agony in the hospital. That's how bad it was. And it was only with cannabis that he was able to get out of the hospital. So yeah. Yeah. Be like the hope in 30 minutes is doing good then Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, his, 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 so his chocolate bars were, you know, really killer, but I, like I said, I diluted them down because, of course, I added more THC to the equation by doing that, too. So I like the effect of that anyway. So, um, so Harley Grower, man, I wish I wish you would have got up here today. But, yeah, you know, if anybody wants to get up here, man, you know, you can come up here and, you know, you know, do your thing. You know, I mean, I don't have to talk all the time. Yeah, so... Um, you know, I, I'm just kind of amazed at how many people that I know are grow pot. <laughs> it's like, you talk, oh, yeah, my brother's growing weed. Oh, my neighbor, he's growing bunch of it. I can get all of it. You know, everybody seems to be growing fucking weed. <laughs> Uh, anybody that's got a, a closet or a fucking basement, you know, or a fucking square in their backyard is growing weed in Missouri, it seems like. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard some of the stats in Missouri. When they made recreational weed legal in Missouri, they sold a billion dollars worth of weed in the first month. <laughs> they had no idea how many stoners there are in the state of Missouri. It was like, are you fucking kidding me? They, you know, and this is not counting the people that are still buying from the unregulated market, which is probably 75% of the market still. But seriously, man, they, they sold a billion dollars worth in one freaking month. And they still didn't have all the, the dispensaries open yet. They were just doing that with the medical dispensaries that were already open and doubling them up as rec dispensaries, and they still sold a billion dollars worth in the first 30 days. And the state's going, whoa, this tax money's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> State of Missouri's got this huge budget surplus going now. They got like a $250 million rainy day fund, they call it, sitting in the bank, you know. Uh, so it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, Missouri was like, they fought it, they fought it, they fought it. They didn't want to make it legal. We got a really strong Republican House and Senate in the state of Missouri. And we've always had Republican governors as long as I remember, until since I was a kid anyway. So they fought it. They did not want it. And But I think what happened, you know, they actually showed films of people driving across the river to Illinois to buy weed. Because they tracked them, you know, they tracked them coming back from the dispensaries or on the other side of the river. And they figured out they were losing millions of dollars a week, you know, on revenue that was going across the river to Illinois. Now, because our taxes are lower on weed in Missouri than Illinois, and our prices, I think, are a little lower than dispensaries, people are coming from Illinois to Missouri to buy weed. <laughs> So, you know, the, the politicians aren't stupid. You know, they may not like weed, but they like money, you know, and they got a lot of money. Listen, to get a license in the state of Missouri, you had to bribe people, okay? I knew a guy that tried to get a license, and his lawyer told him, sorry, your bribe wasn't big enough. So, I mean, they weren't even hiding it. You know, they were buying people off to get these licenses. So, yeah, so uh, a very corrupt process. You know, and a lot of them are now... A lot of them are now owned by out-of-state conglomerates who came in and used Missourians as front people to like, get the license, and then it's all going, money's going to Colorado. It's a bunch of Colorado companies that came in and set these things up, and they used a Missouri front man or something, you know, 
more. So I heard sometimes they use a, a minority, you know, because they were supposed to be giving preference to minorities for justice um, reasons. And um, they didn't do that either. The people that had money got it. And I'm sorry, the minorities didn't have the kind of money to bribe the state officials to get the license. So they didn't get them. But, um, yeah, my last live, I had a friend on there named Tim, um, and uh, he had a little dispensary going, and they busted him, and he spent a fortune in legal fees, and they seized his plants and his equipment and everything. It took him a couple of years to get out of it, so, so yeah, it's really good to see. How, I, I'm just glad to see everybody show up, man. You know, I mean, I just like to smoke with people, you know, and this, this virtual shit's better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, the, the dispensaries, I saw a sign the other day, home of the a $99 half ounce, you know, and I know what that is. They're selling their bottom bud, you know, for $99 a half ounce. That's still 200 bucks an ounce. But I was in the dispensary a few months ago to get, like, a vape cartridge, you know, because I've tried to make vape cartridges a couple of different ways, and I'll be honest with you, I just have not been very good at it. So um, I was in there, and... <laughs> I just felt so sorry. This young guy was in there buying, and he was buying an eighth of Bud. An eighth ounce of Bud. Now think about that. That's three and a half fucking grams. That's maybe two joints. You know, I'm thinking to myself, that wouldn't get me from here to home. It would be smoked. I just felt so sorry for the guy. He was paying $45 for three and a half grams of weed. And I just felt so sorry. For, I almost wanted to meet him out in the parking lot and just hand him a bunch of weeds here, dude, man. You know, just party on, you know. I just felt so sorry because that's all he could afford, you know, was, was $45 for three and a half. I, dude, I bought when the dispensaries first opened, I went in and I bought some weed just to see what I would get. So I got this little, I bought a quarter ounce. And it came in this little fancy jar with a label wrapped all the way around it. So you couldn't really see the weed. <clears throat> and they tell me, oh, no, you can't open it and smell it. No, no, can't do that. Uh... So I brought it home, and it was basically three buds about the size of a musket ball. So, you know, I was like, and they weren't great bud. They weren't real tight or hard bud, really. They were just mediocre average bud. They were nothing. I mean, I wouldn't have thrown them away, but they were nothing to write home about. And I think I paid like uh, 60 bucks or 70 bucks for that, that uh, quarter ounce when I bought that just to see what it was like. <clears throat> and I, I had never, I mean, never bought weed since then. Obviously, you know, I could go in there and try some different strains, you know, just to see what they got. But I am not paying those prices. And I don't think the weed that they're, they're selling these dispensaries is near as good as what I'm growing. You know, it's not as good as what I'm growing. And I'm not bragging when I say that. I'm just saying I can grow better boutique weed where I'm taking care of it myself than I can um, that I can possibly buy at the dispensary, you know. And if I'm actually smoking a quarter pound a week, which is probably right. Oh, God, that's a little discouraging. Um, <clears throat> I would literally go bankrupt. Do you realize, I think they're charging like $300 an ounce for decent weed at the dispensary still. Maybe you might get it for two forty and some of them. Okay, that's just say two fifty. If I was smoking a quarter pound a week, that would cost me a thousand dollars a week to buy weed. Think about that. It would cost me four grand a month to support my smoking. <laughs> that's almost fifty grand. A year. 
That's that's like a Tesla. <laughs> that's like buying a Tesla and burning it up in, in, from the dispensary. So yeah, um, yeah, I could probably probably not uh, probably not afford to smoke like I do now if I had to buy it at the dispensary. Now, I'm thinking about uh, getting out my old vacuum sealer and vacuum sealing a bunch of this stuff up because I've literally got probably. I want to say I've got 10, 12 pounds of weed around here right now, not counting what I've got ready to harvest down there. So I'm thinking about starting to maybe vacuum seal some. I did an experiment. I vacuum sealed some weed for a year, and I opened it up, and I'm telling you what, man. I'm telling you that vacuum seal weed was just like it was the day I put it in the freaking bag. It was still sticky. It was still moist. It was still firm and fresh. It still had great smell. I mean, it was just like it was time frozen, you know, like suspended animation. And I literally put a date on it and left it in there for a year. And I just stuck it in a drawer. I didn't put it in a freezer or refrigerator or anything like that. I just put it in a, a nice, reasonably dry room. Of course, it was vacuum sealed. It doesn't matter, you know. I mean, it, it really is a great way to preserve your weed long term. I honestly think you could open this shit up 20 years from now and it would still be very, very good weed. That's it just if there's no air getting in there to dry out the weed or break down on the THC levels, I think you're gonna basically suspend its deterioration. So yeah, I'd probably get the vacuum sealer out and <clears throat> Start putting some stuff away, putting it safe, you know. I mean, you guys never know. You get in a car accident, you can't grow for a few months, you know, or, uh, you know, you get sick and you're, you're in the hospital for a little while and you, your grow has to stop. It'd be nice to have five or ten pounds put away, you know, sealed up in case, you know, you need to uh, break into it, you know. Not to mention, it's like putting away bars of gold, you know, when you think about what, what it's worth, you know, so. Yeah, um, I, you know, I've heard about the Grove bags, and that's all good, but they're expensive, and I don't want to spend that kind of money, and uh, the vacuum seal works really well. Um, <clears throat> so, that's my best situation on it so far that I've done. Of course, I, all, all the stuff has to be cured, you know, at least two or three, four months before I would even consider putting it in, you know, vacuum seal bags because I want to get the cure out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do store a lot of my weed in jars. And, you know, I do the, the stir and burp, you know, once a month now that it's in the cure cycle and everything. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's fresh. It's fresh. It's doing great, you know. So, yeah, you know, you just um, <laughs> well, you know, uh, somebody's got to talk. Otherwise, this is going to be uh, you all know, staring at me in my ugly face here. So, yeah, um, but yeah, I'm going to try to grow outdoors again. Uh, I've got seven plants. Now, here's my dilemma, guys. I'm trying to figure out when I can put these things outside, and I'll take some advice here. Um, Every time I put my stuff outside, they're coming in from out you know, indoors to outdoors, and they're getting like 16 hours of light downstairs, right? So I put them outside, and it's like 13 hours out there, 14 hours out there, and they start to go into flower. And then they realize that the day's getting longer, and then they have to go back into veg again. So this has happened like every freaking year, you know. I'm trying to, try to figure out how to avoid that problem. Okay. The other problem I have is figuring out when I can put them out and be safe from frost in Missouri. You know, they, the experts say the middle of April is like usually your deadline to worry about. After that, it's usually safe. But we've had frost in May before, so you're, there's always a possibility that no matter when you do it, you're going to have problems. But I don't know how to get these plants to go outside and not go into flower right away unless I keep them indoors till like July. I mean, because like right now, 
the daylight outside right now is about 12 and a half hours, roughly 12 and a half hours a day. So, you know, if I put them outside right now, they would go into flower, you know, pretty much immediately. So if I wait a month and it's like in the 13s and 14 hour range and I put them out, they still want to go into flower on me because they're used to like 16 or 18 hours. And I thought about shortening the cycle downstairs, but if I shorten the cycle downstairs, they'll go into flower. So, <laughs> so you're Johnny, uh, Johnny Appleseed there. Hey, poor garden. You're one of those guys that scatter seeds all over the world. I love that shit, man. I know guys that did that. They'd go camping all over Missouri and they would just throw seeds everywhere. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to experiment with that. I thought about just growing autos outside to solve the problem because you can just plant an auto out there. I don't give a fuck what the light cycle is, but I've got these seven plants that I want to grow out and I don't want to grow them indoors. I decided to change up and do it different. So I'm going to try to grow them outdoors again. They may all go into flower and have to go back into veg again. It's really weird, but run 24 hours for two weeks before you put them out. Really? Will that do it? Huh. Okay, poor card. I'm going to try that because I'm getting close to the two week mark now before I think I'm going to put them out. So <clears throat> I'm going to take your advice on that. See, that's why I like to do these lives. Every once in a while, I can pick up something I need. Because you know what? Almost everybody that follows me that's a grower is a better grower than me. <laughs> so it works out really well. I get a lot of good shit from people. So overloading them on light will, will fuck with their cycle enough that when you put them out in a short cycle, they won't go into veg right away because they still got that stored light cycle, I think, right? It's worth a shot. I mean, the first two or three hours of the first daylight are the best time plant will intake max light okay george green thumb welcome aboard gentlemen good to see you so yeah i'm going to put seven plants out there and let them grow out and i'm going to definitely feed them a lot better than i did last year i really did kind of neglected them last year uh, 18 hours of the short cycle outside them as they tend to want to flower huh because, you know, I always find that my plants don't trigger flower until I put them into about 12, 13 hours of light. Then they immediately go into flower. I don't know. We're going to give that a try, Pork. I'm going to put those on 24-hour light for the next couple of weeks. And uh, I got smart plugs for that shit, so I don't need to fuck with timers no more. I got these smart plugs from Genie, and I just plug my lights into those, and then they can I can set those by my phone. And the time changes and everything, so it works out good. So, yeah, I'm going to try that. So I'm going to grow those outdoors. And next year, I think I'm going to try growing autos outdoors. More benefit from light outside anyway. That's true. Even if they're getting shorter light cycles, they're getting more volume of light per hour because it's the sun. <laughs> I mean, it's the big light. You know, It's like the max LED, right? So... Yeah, even if it's getting some shade and even if it's getting shorter light cycle, if it's getting the sun, it's going to get more light so per hour, per cubic foot of plant. So. And I'm going to do the defoliating and the training and the, the shit I didn't do last year outdoors. I just kind of let it grow wild last year outdoors. So I'm going to try to do these a little bit better this year outdoors to see what I can get out of them. Yeah. I love those guys in California that are... I used to see these guys online all the time, and they would show these plants that are like 24 foot tall. They're like a tree, and they're standing next to it. They got a ladder to get up to the top, the top of it and stuff. And uh, I'm like, how the fuck do you grow a plant that big? Well, it's warm in California. They can put them outside in fucking January. <laughs> yeah. So they got fucking like seven, eight months of veg. <laughs> Before they go into flower. 4 a.m. daylight to 10.30 p.m. So that's the early peck of summer reason why I check the time and put them out on and let the day of calendar that one. Okay. 
Okay, before you do, I like to do 30 p.m. So that's PMs. I consider using the solar light, those state types, to keep lights on plants, but I struggle with the safe, sometimes the flower and stunt my bench. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've experimented. I've seen people experiment with all kinds of things on light cycles, you know, the fading on and off, like the sun rising and setting, and even simulating lightning, you know. But I'm not going to do all that shit. I don't have money for that kind of stuff, and I'm not going to do all that. I don't think it's going to make that much difference. And I'm not going to put CO2 in my tents. Unless you can seal them damn things down and don't use a, an exhaust fan, you're just pumping CO2 out. Yeah, I can't afford to do that shit either. I don't need CO2. I'm getting plenty. You know, I got three, I got two cats and two people living here. We're putting out plenty of CO2. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Cheers. Everybody smoke up. If you got it, smoke it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Fort Guard. And then you, you fuck around with autos, you know, and, you know, has anybody ever done like research on what is the best light cycle for autos? You know, is it really 16 hours or 18 hours or, you know, I've seen people run up 20 hours a day under the light to get faster growth. I mean, you know, that's a lot. Of course, that could also vary from strain to strain, too. But I mean, there's a whole lot you could do with autos experimenting with different lengths of light cycle and different distances of light from the plant to stimulate growth the right way. And also, you know, who's using UV lights? Anybody using the UV lights in their tents? Talk to me, folks. Are anybody using UV lights in your tents? You know, how long do you use them in flower? What cycles are you using them on? And <clears throat> do you think it's making any difference? I mean, understand, UV stresses the plant. It's ultraviolet rays of the sun that made plants produce THC in the first place. So I get all that, I understand science behind it <clears throat> so when you throw uv light at it 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 stresses the plant into thinking it's getting attacked by a lot of ultraviolet radiation and it produces more thc to protect the plant i get all that if you're using uv you have a better chance over to the outdoors as well oh okay so using uv indoors would give it a better transition outdoors because the sun's got lots of uv out there yeah I can see that. I just didn't really want to invest in the UV lights, you know, and set up separate timers and all the shit that goes with it. Um, you know, I'm not convinced for my indoor grow that it would be worth the money um, and the hassle for what benefit I would get in my plants. I mean, the shit I'm growing is just covered in crystals. You couldn't get any more on it. The stems are covered in crystals. The stalks are covered in crystals. The leaves are covered in crystals. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, how much UV is going to make any difference on that? Um, yeah, I know some LEDs have them built in, which is nice, and you can have variable timers on them. Because I think a lot of times you're only doing them like two hours a day during a certain part of the flower cycle. You're not supposed to do it all through the, the grow, right? There's just a certain, uh, I think it's like two hours a day for like the... Uh, the Last two weeks of flower, or I'm wrong. I could be wrong on that. Um, not using UV indoors. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a real weird cycle. You only use it a certain part of the flower cycle, and you only use it a certain amount of time during the day. Because too much, and you'll just kill your plants. I mean, UV is radiation, you know. You, know, you can kill them. So, the deepest reds, ultra, uh, carry the best lumens. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it deepens the reds, yeah, okay, I get that. Yeah. I'm getting real strong red hair and real purple on my leaves and buds. So, again, a lot of that's your feed, though, you know, give them the right amount of potassium and phosphorus and all that. Um, I use a midnight finishing bulb, which is like moonlight, bluish, purplish color. Really? So how do you use that, pork card? What is your, how, do you, how do you use that in your grow? Give me some ideas on how you're doing that. Midnight finishing bolt, which is like moonlight, bluish, purplish color. So it's almost like a black light, like the old black lights from the, the 70s, right? Um, moonlight, bluish, purple color. Um, 
do you use that? So tell me how you use it in your grow. How how long do you use it? When do you use it in the grow? Is it is it just like Mars Hydro is an IR light supplement add on seen on Bill Ward? Yeah, yeah, I've seen those where you, they it clamps onto the light or adds onto the their bar in the middle because there's a nice gap in the middle of their their bar lights, you know. So where they fold out, so you could you could add it. That's where they add to is right there. Yeah. And again, I just don't know if I need it. The weed I'm growing is it's knocking me on my ass, dude. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm suffering some serious couch lock during the day several times a week. You know, yeah. Have you ever been like sitting there watching a movie and you're smoking your weed and you look up and that movie's off and YouTube's brought another movie on and you're halfway through it. You know, and you have to like rewind um, and go back to the movie you were watching. That's college lock. To me, that's like real college lock. You're, you're gone for like 30, 40 minutes, you know, maybe longer. And I don't really think you're asleep. You're just completely gone. So I don't really know how much stronger I need to get this weed. And again, grow stronger strains, you get stronger weed. And don't have to add a light to do that. So, I mean, you know, if, if it's, the weed's got good strength to begin with, even if you don't get the full strength out of it, if it's a 35% and you only get 80% of the strength, you're still getting in the high 20s. And you're still going to be real fucked up. That's what they would look, would use back then. Yes, Dave, last two weeks of flower for the finishing bowl. So they used to use black lights. Okay. The last two weeks of flower. Still on a 12 hour cycle, they would use nothing but this blue bulb, is what you're saying. Huh. Now that's interesting. And what does that do for you, poor guard? Does that make them finish faster or does it um, trigger them into finishing faster? Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff I'm growing is, is just such a strong indica hybrid or indica dominant. That you know, you smoke a couple bowls of it, and you're literally just like incoherent. You're just like numb. You're just like sitting there going, you know. Uh, I couldn't smoke during the day. Totally put it down on my ass. Yeah, you know, and and that's and that's cool. Sometimes you want that shit. You know, you had a crappy day. You're stressed out. You hit that fucking bowl, and you know you're gonna sleep good. You're gonna eat good. <laughs> An annual or perennial? I thought. Well, I don't know if they would come back if you let them just stay outside like a, an annual. I don't, I don't know. Huh. Okay, now you're blowing my mind, but I need a pack of new bullets, so you know, let's just keep on moving here. Oh, so yeah, I'm using this Chromebook and this new camera, and this is nice. I was trying to do these lives with a, a tablet or a phone on a stand. You know, that's a real pain in the ass. Um, this is actually a lot better. That night, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, don't, let's not do that right now. You need to be careful. Okay, I'm going to do some purple banana cookies here. I got a lot of this. I've got a, I've got a five-gallon bucket of this. <laughs> Uh, have you ever couched like during a live stream? <laughs> hey, Jeff. Um, uh, co close a couple of times. That, that's my good friend, Jeff Mulliken. If you've ever watched my videos and you see that cool tagline at the beginning, you know, grower, deacon, Dave, you know, minister of weed, all that, minister of medicine. This is the man here, Jeff Mulliken, who's been my friend for over 40 years, um, who made that tag for me. And I love it, man. I, I love the music. I love the 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 background. Everything about it is just totally cool. He did a great job on it, and it was just it's fantastic, you know. So good to see you, Jeff. I swear to God, I can't believe you showed up. That's fantastic, man. So yeah, um, so yeah, the cops lock can be bad situation. Now, part of the problem I have, I think, in the past with cops lock is I found out I have uh, uh, sleep apnea. You know, and uh, I'm on the damn mask and all that shit now. Because I used to, like, fall asleep during the day, like, all kinds of weird times. You're, like, sitting at the stop sign and you fall asleep kind of shit. That's That scares the crap out of you. 
I'll tell you the scariest thing ever happened to me, man. I was riding my motorcycle one time, and I swear to God, I looked up and I realized I had fallen asleep. Now, it was probably only a couple of seconds. You know, I'm hoping it was only a couple of seconds, but I actually fell asleep one time on a motorcycle. I stopped and got one of those energy shots and a couple of them just downed them because I had to finish the ride. You know, I was way out in the middle of nowhere. Scariest fucking thing I have ever experienced in my life is your eyes open up and you realize I'm on a motorcycle and my eyes were just fucking closed. You just have visions of like driving straight off a curve, you know, just keep going straight on. So, um, you know, and there's a lot of cases around Missouri where riders seem to like ride in straight up, straight off a curve into trees and shit. And they can't figure out what's going on. And my guess is I think these guys are drinking and they're passing out on the, on, on the bike. I don't think they're just forgetting how to ride a motorcycle. I think they're literally getting, you know, fucked up and, and like, passing out while they're riding a motorcycle. It's not a good deal. <laughs> it is not a fucking good idea. I mean, dude, you know, I even have to be, that's the one time in my life that I'm real careful not to just like smoke my brains off before I get on a motorcycle, you know, because, you know, I, I want my reflexes to be kind of there if I need them, you know. I mean, I've been down a couple of times off a bike and you know, I broke some ribs and shit the collarbone and that so um yeah i respect motorcycles and i don't fuck around i don't drink when i'm on a bike you know i never drink at all but i never drink when i'm on a bike yeah jeff i love that tagline i love it it makes me smile every time i hear the damn thing <laughs> oh so yeah it's so cool to see you today um so yeah um yeah how many people out there have problems smoking sativas? I do, okay? If I smoke a pure sativa, um, I get fucking jittery. I get, like, anxious. I get, like, handshake even sometimes a little bit. It's almost like doing Black Beauties from the 80s to me. That, I can't do pure sativas very much at all. Now, I will tell you the last time I did one, uh, I got up and did like a four hour list of stuff and I had it done in like a half hour. <laughs> so it has its place. Um, okay, only that I don't have enough of it. <laughs> Motorbike accident, you name it, 2023 was a bad omen year. Oh, poor Garden, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I mean, everybody I know that rides has had an accident. And it's just a matter of whether you survive or not. You know, it sucks, man. I, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Seriously, when it's a pure sativa, I, you know, my friend Jeff has that issue, and I had to, you know, really counsel him to stay around around the indica hybrids or the pure indicas because, yeah, if it bothers me, you know, it's definitely gonna bother other people a lot worse. So uh, I've got some uh, uh, sativas around here. In fact, I just harvested a Bali Wow. Yeah, you know, I've got some a little bit of amnesia around here, and I never drink it. I never smoke it. Yeah, I love that idea. Uh, that'd be a great name for a strain, you know, sleep rider. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah. Um, and again, I, I've i got 83-year-old people that are using my edibles and stuff to help them sleep at night. You know how old people sleep like three hours a night if they're lucky. Um, they're telling me they're getting like six, seven hours of sleep now. You know, which is pretty damn good when you're in your 80s. So, yeah, the stuff can put you on your ass if you want it to. Green has one called Sunday Driver. Yeah, I never did that one. Um, never grew that one. So what does everybody think? Do you think I ought to move on from Greenpoint? I've been growing the shit out of it for a while now. And, you know, maybe I need to move into, you know, I've been doing a lot of purples. I love purple strains. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But I've got probably a dozen strains around here that are all purple, have purple in them one way or another. So, um, you know, I could go into the cookie strains a little bit more or the, the pastry strains a little bit more. You know what I've been thinking about growing? I believe the earth says you use it for medical stuff, not any healing. I think 80% of people I know have like one out of 10 issues smoking it. 
Yeah, that that makes sense a lot. What you're saying there, poor girl. You know, I've been one. I've been considering trying to grow some chocolate strains. I've never grown or smoked any of the chocolate strains, and I've been saying this for a couple of years now. And I just never broke down and bought any of them. So, give me your ideas. Who out there has smoked a good chocolate strain, and what is that strain? Creams and oils and butter, a few things for LB. I do the same thing, dude. Uh, creams, oils, butter, uh, gummies, chocolate squares, all kinds of things. Old people don't like to smoke. So, you know, I make all that stuff for old people. And they love it. They love how it works, and it doesn't interfere with their meds, and it doesn't cause side effects or anything. They love it. Yeah. I keep a green point strain Sunday, stallion, great hybrid, ton of flavor. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got tons of green point strains, and I got clones of them down there, and I've got a bunch of them going outside. So we're going to be. We're going to be smoking green point strains for a long time because i've got just pounds of it around here chocolate kush that was real nice can't remember what parents or company though so that would be a good indica uh with a chocolate to it mm, that that's one i've heard mentioned chocolate og mint kush that sounds delicious if it's got the, I don't like green point star dog crosses. Okay, yeah, I've seen that they've been doing some crosses in there too. Yeah, they, don't get me wrong. I think they are a great breeder. I mean, their strains have been easy to grow for the most part and good yielders. I mean, you know, that purple banana cookies I grew, I, I got almost two pounds out of one plant. You know, I mean, indoors, that was a good fucking plant. You know, so. Their plants are good, good yielders, and they're, uh, you know, they're really just, you know, good flavor, and they're strong. Every one of their strains I've smoked has been strong. You know, the Texas Toasted may be small buds, but they kick your ass, you know. So uh, Alien Punch, you know, that's from them. And, boy, that one's got one of the most unusual flavors I've ever smelled or tasted in the pot. And the uh, buzz is really good. So, you know. Dog biscuit by Greenpoint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew a little bit of that. Chuck, we soak you around nowadays. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, and I'm thinking, I don't want to sound sexist when I'm saying this, but I'm thinking my female clients out there would love the chocolate strains because they like chocolate. I like chocolate too, so there ain't nothing really sexist about that, really. But I would say that, you know, I have found that women like chocolate. And if you could give them weed that tasted like chocolate and had a good indica buzz to it, I think they would be pleased with that. So you've ran your share of Greenpoint strains, yeah. I've also grown some fast bud stuff. Anybody here growing any of their, their strains? I grew their purple lemonade before. And I think there was another one of theirs I grew. Anybody else growing any of their fast, fast buds, 420? Anybody growing any of their stuff? Coffees, yeah. The coffees are going to be your chocolate strains, I guess, a lot of times, you know. I would love to grow a strain that tastes like a Heath bar <laughs> with the toffee flavor and the chocolate. <laughs> that would be freaking delicious, man. You probably want to eat the buds. So, anybody, anybody else growing anything for Fast Buds 420? Right. You're right about that, Port Garden. Yeah. In the compare mainly unless you like the earth sativa yeah exactly i agree with that you know and again all my hybrids uh, you know that i grow are, are indica dominance and every once in a while though you'll, you'll grow one and you'll definitely feel the sativa kick in it so you know each phenol is gonna be a little different flavor chasing wedding cake was big oh man you know what i've heard a lot of good things about wedding cake i've never actually grown pure wedding cake growing every year yeah, Fast Buds 420, interestingly enough, I, you know, I figured out how they're doing this. They're taking an auto and crossing it back with a photo. So you end up getting a photo that finishes very quick. Um, it's, a, it's a weird concept, but it works, you know. Yeah, I don't like the dirty flavors. Yeah, I don't like the diesels. I don't like the diesel gassies, and I don't like the, the, the moldy, musky, Dirt flavors. I don't care for those, you know. Sure, we ought to have some awesome turbo clove, female independent. I got loads of them, mate. You want them? <laughs> um, uh, 
Loads of autos. Yeah. You know, I'm going to start growing more autos, you know. I mean, the downside with autos is you really can't clone them, although I am cloning some right now to see if I can do it again. I did it once before. I cloned an auto, but I did it too late in the veg cycle, so the plant never got very big, but it still grew weed. This time I did it very early in the veg cycle, so the plant has got lots of time left to grow again. We'll see what we get out of it. So, I think the auto photo crosses show tons of vigor. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. I think the, the ruderalis or whatever they use in the auto definitely makes it a hardy plant because, I mean, the faces, they grow above the Arctic, you know, and they grow in, in weird sunlight patterns and stuff. They're, they're pretty hardy. So, yeah, I think you're right about that. Absolutely, George, that anything that's crossed with an auto is going to get, it's going to grow hardier in a lot of ways, you know. Um, so, anybody here grow um, the big bud strains like um, uh, uh, Bruce Banner? Anybody grow any of those stuff? Bubba Gift. What's Bubba Gift? What's that one for, Garden? Indoor, they make great. Yeah, F1 hybrid. Yeah. So, what's Bubba Gift? Bubba Gift. Um, yeah, it might grow like the Bruce Banners or any of the big bud strains. Nine pound hammer, I think, is another one that's supposed to be a big bud strain. You're doing White Widow now, huh? I've grown White Widow a couple of different times. In fact, I still got a couple of seeds left from uh, IOGM in my my uh, library. Um, white Widow's an acquired taste. I mean, you know, I have to be in the mood to smoke White Widow. It's a little different. It's a photo part that's adding the vigor, not the. Oh, okay. I guess I'm wrong on that. I thought it would be the Ruderalis. So, yeah, those fast bud 420s are kind of fun to play with because I think they finish, like, uh, a month faster, you know, like 30 days quicker than, you know, whatever. Only Bruce Banner Auto, but I've been considering running a Bruce Photo period. Original BC Big Bud, yeah. Okay, mixed with God's gift. Mm, blueberry mixed with God's gift. Interesting. Does anybody have any idea how many fucking strains of marijuana we've got on the market? <laughs> it's got to be in the thousands and thousands and thousands. <laughs> I can't. Nobody can keep up with them. Two liter pop bottle buds. Oh, wow. Wow. Original BC Big Bud. Huh? Hmm. Oh, yeah, too many to count. I don't know if anybody's ever going to be able to put together like a definitive database. Maybe AI could do it, you know, have AI scan the, the Internet for all the different strains out there and compile a database. AI could probably do it, but not a human being. Shark breath. Never tried that one. I've grown Star Dog before and uh, some of the other ones we've been talking about. And I keep making my own crosses to add to the mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you guys all like to keep reading, don't you? <laughs> yes, keep on doing it. I, I actually developed a few strains by accident, uh, but I don't consider myself a breeder. They just accidentally, well, you know, anyway. Um, so I did, <laughs> I did make a few crosses that were my own, but they were probably strains that I accidentally crossed, basically, so. Yeah, George, I'm going to definitely uh, want to sort of sub up to you, man. You know, I'm a, I don't think I'm up to you yet, so I want to sub up to you for sure. Um, yeah, guys, it's been fun. Everybody having a good time. Everybody, I hope you're all smoking a little bit, partying a little bit. Um, people on strains of companies, food, so I've done them all, tried the products, yeah. So I've been using Master Blend Nutrients lately, guys. It's cheap as dirt. Uh, it's a three-part nutrient, um, and you use it through the whole, the whole plant cycle. You don't have to make up different recipes for veg and flour, and it's fucking easy to use, and I'm really getting great results with it. We can't call it. Yeah, exactly, dude. That's one of the reasons why if I was going to actually going to do breeding, I would be making autos because you can't fucking. Well, George, I'm trying to call them. You know, Bill Ward did it before. I've known other breeders, growers that have actually successfully cloned autos. Um, 
it's tricky and you're going to have to use a clone machine because they, you can't spend a lot of time getting root. You got to get root out pretty quick to get them in the dirt so that they can start, you know, vegging out still, you know, keep catch up again. But I'm, I'm trying to clone uh, unknown mites right now. I got three cuts of it. And I'm trying to clone it right now. I just couldn't throw away. I cut them off the bottom, lollipop in it, and they look so healthy. I stuck them in there and they did not drop at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen some of the no channel. I would definitely all keep in touch here. Definitely, George. I'm glad to see you, man. Um, yeah, I see some of these guys in California and that that you know have these 25 foot tall plants that are they're as big around as a car. You know, um, uh, seriously, they're 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 like they got to be bringing like 10 pounds or out of this one plant easy i mean they're they're trees you see birds building nests in these things you know they're so big they're straight organic down no bottle stuff at all yeah these are these are these are dry uh, nutrients these are dry nutrients i'm not using bottle stuff at all these are just dry nutrients so yeah uh i did that stuck a few branches that went on of they root but fall behind on the finish well yeah i mean that's that's the that's the trick to it you know i'm going to try hyper feeding them and you know a few tricks to see if i can't get them to to do it you know yeah poor garden i i i'm not the world's greatest cloner but i can get them to work you know i, I can get everything to clone that i put in there for the most part 15 in a plant oh my god 15 pounds in one fucking plant i thought i was doing good when i got two pounds of one plant indoors i can't even imagine getting 15 pounds off a plant imagine the trimming Oh, yeah, all you got to do this week is trim this plant. Yeah, the plant has 15 pounds of butt on it. <laughs> oh, God, yo. That's outdoor. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get 15 pounds on an indoor plant. Could you imagine, though? I mean, just hanging all that to dry and getting it processed and pre trimmed and hanged would be a, a couple of days by itself. And then after it's dry, you got to take those branches and you got to trim all that fucking butt. You better get a big machine to do it because you ain't going to do that by hand. Skip the trail. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you're just going to make bubble hash out of it or you, you run it through a, a big press or you, you know. I've been doing better with the key hash. I got a little tumbler. I tried the bubble hash, man. I do not get good yields with the bubble hash. And I've got a press, and I have not ever once got a decent wax yield out of my weed. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I don't get anywhere with it. And no, I haven't tried the cocoa drip system at all. That, that, that question is for me. No, I haven't tried that. Um, I have had virtually very little luck with bubble hash. For all the work you do, you get this tiny little bit of A worth it. Uh, 30 ounces of a plant indoors. Wow, 57 liter pot, 30 ounces. So that's that's almost two pounds. Yeah, I got 32. I got 30. I got almost a little bit over that on that purple banana cookie. It was right at almost two pounds on that purple banana cookie I got in one plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was worth a hell of a lot more than that in Missouri, guy. Oh, yeah. Worth a hell of a lot more than 200 bucks a pound in Missouri. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're in the wrong part of the country because, yeah, we're still getting, you know, the market's still doing well out here. Yeah, that is, when you get when you get above 30 ounces out of an indoor plant in a 4x4, 4x5, 10, it's uh, pretty impressive. You know, I mean, that's, it, it was, I was blown away. I couldn't believe how much I, when I weighed, I was like, wow. Well, that's first. That's the best I've ever done. Was well, I did two plants on it back to back? Did almost the same yield both of them. So, Bubba Hash, you need right micro bags and ice and right method. Yeah, you know what? I've got the bags, but I'm too lazy to use them all, and I don't. I don't not have the technique down right. And you know, I got this little tumbler I bought from France, and uh, I do. I do some really good key, uh, key bash with it. You know, really good key fash with it, and I like it. You know, you throw it on top of a bowl of weed, and, and it'll fuck you up. So, 
<clears throat> and I can do I can run my sugar leaves through that, I can run my bottom buds through that, and I get some really blonde hash. I mean, it's really nice. So so I kind of settled on key hash for my hash processing because bubble hash is it's just too much fucking work. It's just a lot of fucking work. Dumping the water and scraping the fucking bag and then cleaning the bag and then dumping the water. It's a lot of fucking work. Yeah. Do you guys know Canadian bacon? And you guys know Canadian bacon, Mike? He has a setup up there where he has six full-size laundry washing machines, right? And they're wow, plumbed in series. And they go through this big tub of ice water. And they recirculate back through all these tubs of these washing machines of weed. And he makes like pounds and pounds of bubble hash, like big old fucking blocks, bricks of bubble hash. Put one put 100 grams out of the bag on a run, you know. Yeah, I'll bake it. I mean, he showed me the stuff. He showed me these big chunks of this fucking bubble hash that was just like, holy fuck. And same thing with wax. He's showing me these big old fucking bars of wax, like gold bullion sized bars of wax. You know, I'm like, fuck. So yeah, indoor, I, I'm I'm glad you like running it. I, I find it too much fucking work. But if I really wanted to get into it, you know, I would go, I would get on the bubble bag dude website again and watch his videos because he really knows his shit. Now, part of the problem I may be having too is. I don't put my top quality bud in my bubble hash. I put my trim bud. So that may be part of the problem, too, as far as not getting as much yield, you know, like 10 different stages. Yeah, I know, man. It, you get the different grades of it all. And you got to, oh, uh, yeah, it's too much. I think it's just too much. And you're right. It's all got to be in the technique. Because I watched the guy, bubble bag dudes do it on a video, and they made it look great. But you know what? It was two guys doing it. One guy was over there cleaning the bags while the other guy was doing the other part, you know. So they had a process going. It was two guys doing the process. It, and, you know, it's still a lot of work. I want that all mixed together. <laughs> yeah. We see some stuff on Discord, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, Canadian Bacon, he's, he's got, got some cool shit going on up there. I like his stuff. Yeah, he's He's been a good, good, good friend for a long time now, and uh, one of the few Canadians I know that I would, I would like to visit sometime. Yeah, I mean, did, yeah, it was so funny to see him do the six washing machines all plumbed together in series. Man, it was like, and they pump between, and they go through this big old ice chamber of water, and they, they go back through. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, dude. Yeah, yeah. Anybody remember that that show Weeds on the Eastbound Showtime? Remember when she took that big bag of trim into the laundromat and threw it in the front loading washing machine? You guys remember that scene? I'll never forget that. She, she dumps a duffel bag of weed, a fucking duffel bag of weed into this front loading washing machine with some ice. <laughs> she put some quarters in it. Yeah, I will. I'll check that out sometime. That was, if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. It is one of the funniest fucking scenes I've ever seen, man. She's making bubble heads in a fucking laundromat. I sure would fuck that laundry machine up. Oh, ah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, man, the, the bubble hash is, is just a lot of fucking work. And, and it's an art. There's definitely an art to that one. The key hash, eh, that's not so bad. I use dry ice in the in the tumbler with the key hash with the with the trim, and I get beautiful blonde key hash out of it. It's like blonde, blonde. So you know. It works for me, you know. It, it's a good way to, to uh, process a lot of trim. And, uh, you know, dust your joints with it and stuff. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, okay, so we've been on this thing almost two hours now. Uh, getting a little tired of talking here. 
with somebody I'd like to jump up here, but I guess nobody wants to join me, so that's the way it goes. Um, so. I don't know what else to say, guys. I'm kind of running out of things to talk about here. But I will say this for the record. I love marijuana. I love growing it. I love smoking it even more than I love growing it. I love doing edibles and extracts and medicines with it. And I think that we're all very fortunate to live in a time where, in most of our cases, we can try to grow this stuff legally. You know, i got to pay a fine or a fee every year to the fucking government. But we get to grow our own weed and smoke it with nobody fucking with us. You have no idea, because you're all young, you have no idea how long some of us have waited for the opportunity to like legally possess marijuana and grow it without having to worry about Johnny Law busting us and putting us in jail. I mean, you know, I got busted a couple of times for possession. I had to pay a lawyer out the ass, had to pay a bribe to the judge and the prosecuting attorney, and everything went away, of course. But <clears throat> yeah, it's it's just my thoughts on this is like, you know. Yes, it sucks that we have to pay a license fee to grow marijuana. We shouldn't have to. I never thought I would be. I can remember when I was in college, we'd sit around and talk about, man, someday it's going to be legal. By 2000, at least, it's going to be legal, man. It's going to be legal, and you're going to be able to go into 7-Eleven and just buy a pack of joints, you know. And The big tobacco companies will be making them on simply lines, you know, and it's going to be legal. Well, 2000 came. And we weren't even fucking close to it being legal. You know, people were still getting thrown in jail in Missouri for long prison sentences for like an ounce of fucking weed. So, you know, when it finally did happen, it happened pretty fast. But I was so thrilled to be able to go get my medical card and start my grow. To this day, I can't tell you. It's like my life has before and after the day I started growing my own weed. It's really been that much of a difference in my life. Put it this way. I figured out one time that I probably spent over $600,000 buying marijuana when I was buying it. Now, that had a really long-term effect on my retirement. I have none. A really long-term effect on my standard of living because it was like basically having a, a luxury car payment every month. Okay? So... The fact that now I can grow my own and it's no longer a financial burden and I can grow whatever strain I want and smoke as much as I want is like literally like like George has said, we're living the dream. We are living the fucking dream because you you have no idea how many millions of us were got hassled and screwed by people and, and couldn't get jobs and got fired from jobs and all kinds of bullshit. To get us to this point, you know, people that spent serious time in prison for bringing us our weed, you know, they got busted for dealing. So, you know, they were doing us a favor, basically, you know, getting us to what we needed. And they ended up in jail for a long period. Yeah, I mean, growing marijuana, George, you're right. It taught me a lot of things. It taught me patience. It taught me how to get in sync with the plant and be able to look at the plant and feel what it's going on with the plant. You know, I can tell looking at a plant, if it's happy, healthy, what's missing a lot of times by looking at it. Right. And it's, you know, it's, you're right. You learn how to literally become one with, with a, a part of nature. It's kind of different, you know? And, and then the first time I lit up a bowl of my own weed, and it wasn't probably that great. It was all right. It got me high. It was like the biggest fucking thrill of my life because I grew it. I didn't have to go out and buy it somewhere. It was fantastic. So, and you know, if anybody out there who smokes weed and is not growing and they're in a state where they can legally grow, you're stupid. I mean, 
I've been talking about this on my videos. Okay, say you don't have tents and you don't have a basement and you don't have, you know, 50,000 watts of lights and you don't have an RO filter and you don't have all that good shit, right? You could put an auto in a 20 gallon pot in the corner of your fucking bedroom with a thousand watt LED over the top of it and a timer and grow four, five, six ounces of weed off that plant. Now, for most people out there, that would be a lot of weed. I mean, you know, we talked about the guy that was at the dispensary buying a fucking eighth of, about, eighth of an ounce of weed. I don't know how long that was supposed to last him. But, you know, we've all known those guys that can buy an ounce of weed and you, you see them six months later and they're still smoking it. You look at them like, are you fucking nuts, dude? Are you really stupid? What the fuck? You know? So I had the biggest smile. I even chuckled over my over my first going out. I'll never forget it. Exactly, George. It was like it was like a feeling of freedom. And I got to tell you this. When I finally harvested enough weed that I knew I wasn't going to run out before my next harvest, I call it Weed Independence Day. That was a big fucking day for me because I knew from then on I was never going to run out because I was always going to be able to grow enough to keep up with my needs and, and before I ran out. And I was only going to be able to produce more as I got better. And I wasn't going to have to buy it somewhere. So that was great to have that Weed Independence Day to know that I don't have to go out and, and buy it anymore. I don't have to go out and source it on the street and take a chance there. And I don't have to go out and pay outrageous taxes and fees at the dispensary, you know. So, yeah, we're living in, in, in good times. This is a good time for everybody. I, 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 I mean, yeah, there's a lot of shit fucked up in the world right now. This whole Israel-Gaza thing sucks ass right now. That needs to end up quick now. There's a lot of things that need to go change around here. But the fact that we're, we're finally getting hassled less, you know, they're finally not hassling us anymore. It's been a long time coming. So... That's, there's a lot of people we got to thank for this too, man. You know, guys like Jack Herrera, you know, guys that went to prison, you know. How about Ricky Simpson? Went to prison several times making RSO for his cancer patient friends in Canada. Went to prison over and over for it. You know, those are the people that got us here, you know, and we owe them a big fucking debt, you know. So, yeah. Is he? Well, that's cool, man, you know, so... You know, I, I, I have actually known people that have literally covered from cancer using RSO. I believe that because it's so concentrated that it can be very beneficial to people that have cancer. So, you know, good, good for him. Yeah, you got that right, man. Everybody was pioneers, man. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, hats off to them, man. They did, they did the work. They did the job for us, and they didn't give us a hard time. They just did what they had to do, you know. And, uh, you know, oh, man, I can still remember, you know, being in the Kmart parking lot at midnight, you know, meeting some guy to hook up to get an ounce, you know. <laughs> Fucking crazy shit, man. So... Yeah, I don't know about legalization federally or not. I don't know if that's, we can't even get them to decriminalize it or to change the scheduling of it to, you know, from Schedule 1, um, which is ridiculous. That's up there with like heroin and fucking fentanyl and, and you know, LSD. It's, it's up there with the hardest drugs. You know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But, you know, I was thinking about that the other day. If it's ever federally legal, because my, okay, right now I can buy CBD uh, bud on eBay legally, okay? And I've had it shipped to me before, and I swear to God, if you were trying to rip somebody off, they couldn't tell it wasn't loaded with THC by looking at it, right? So <clears throat> um, if it's federally legal, would we be able to someday sell our weed on eBay? Or maybe Amazon Marketplace or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. You think that's possible? That would be kind of cool. Strangest places you've ever met to buy weed. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you. I was here in St. Louis, and I was out of weed. 
and nobody around here had any weed. And I had a friend in Columbia, Missouri that had it. He said, I can sell you a half ounce. I drove a hundred fucking miles and bought that half ounce of weed and drove back. <laughs> so I don't know if that's an unusual place, but it was probably the longest distance I've ever driven to buy that small of a quantity of weed. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, um, I once bought some weed from a guy whose dad was a cop, and the funny thing is, I bought an ounce of weed, and it was five different kinds of weed, which I figured out was, this is weed that the guy's dad had seized from people on the road, and his son was selling it. Because, I mean, who gets a fucking ounce of weed with five different kinds of weed? I mean, I do that for clients who want that, but that wasn't the way the street did it. You know, nobody had five different kinds of weed. So, yeah, I would get these weird bags. And I knew it was his dad getting it from people he was busting on the street and letting them go. I'll, I'll, I'll just get rid of this for you. Yeah, I know you will. You know, one fucking puff at a time. Five flavor mystery bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the buds were different. You know, you'd see these buds all mixed together. And you see they were different bud, different color, you know, different texture a little bit. You're like, oh, my God, there's all kinds of weed in this motherfucker, you know. So, yeah, that was probably the weirdest weed I ever seen. And I knew it. this guy, this guy's dad was seizing it for people on the road and just and letting his kids sell it. Fucking cops, you know. It's like, yeah, corrupt as hell. They're all doing that shit back then. So, so yeah. Ah, well. You know what, guys? This has been a lot of fun, but I tell you what, we're, we're basically at two hours now. I like to keep these at two hours or less because they just get boring after well, that's the first hour, probably. So, um, I think we're probably going to wrap this all up right now. Um, I appreciate everybody showing up today, man. It, it just does me a bit, a lot of good to see all these people show up. A lot of good friends. I know a lot of these people here. I feel like some of them I know them personally, you know. And, uh, you know, Jeff, good to see you out here, man. I can't believe it. That's awesome. So anyway, guys, you know, remember, keep taking your medicine. <laughs>